Hi guys, thanks for checking the video out. Steve Buzzer here, and today's video is on rangefinders. So um, I have two in my hands here. Uh, this one, the Bushnell, is high end and it's pretty much the market leader. You know, I've got the Tor V4 Slope Edition here. And then I have this one here, the Bovlo, which uh, was sent to me, and it's kind of an alternative that's a bit cheaper. Um, it claims it's got all of the same functionality, but it's quite a bit cheaper. You know, we're looking kind of $100 cheaper. So I thought I would do a little bit of a compare, and more importantly, do I feel like the cheaper alternative um, can help your golf game? And I've used this one for a while now, so um, I was sent it um, at the beginning of the year, so I've played a number of rounds, and it has been very good. Um, I've actually been impressed, and um, I was sent... Um, a rangefinder before, not not this brand, but I was sent one and it just did not work. Like period, it wouldn't give me a number. So I was a bit skeptical about these uh, these cheaper versions, but yeah, it, it's been very good. Um, I went out and I tested both of these on the driving range and they claim about the same thing, about one yard accuracy and they were both very good. The one thing I would say is the Bushnell always gave the same number, where this one sometimes flicked around with the numbers. And if you if you kept pressing for the number, um, it would alter it slightly. And I think that's for two reasons. One, to its detriment, and I would say this is um, very solvable for them, is they give it to a decimal point and I don't think that helps them. So I had in one instance, this one was saying 124, this one was saying 123.8 and then it would go down to 123, then it would, you know, the decimal kept changing. So it gave the impression it was actually less accurate than I think it was. So this one, very stable, always gave you the same number. This one, the number slightly jumped around but I wouldn't say it jumped out of a tolerance that made it um, give you a number that would affect your game negatively. What was interesting as well is I tried them, I tried a, like a close, like a wedge number, like a medium, long iron, and then I did a really long one, and it actually performed best. It compared perfectly at 320 yards, which uh, you wouldn't expect, but it... Um, it was very stable there and yeah the numbers flicked around a little bit but it was like the worst one I had was I think two yards different to this one but most of the time it, yeah it was either within one or it was very much the same so it's accurate enough um, I like that both of them buzz so when you hit the number they both got pin seeker so when it catches the flag it buzzes so I, I really really like that um, both have got slope where you can turn them, turn the slope off. So you, it, the both of them are definitely legal for tournament play. And uh, this one gives you miles per hour. I think if you run past it, you can. I didn't check that function. Um, I wasn't in the mood for running when I uh, when I was out on the range. But uh, yeah, they've got very very similar um, features and. This one has been very reliable. Something that I do like about this one, and if you were looking at a cheaper alternative to like the market leaders like the Bushnell or the Nikon, um, is I'm not a fan of the models that use like batteries like a AA or a AAA because they kind of go through the batteries pretty quick. This one's actually got a rechargeable one. I think it's got a USB which you can which you can plug in, and that that's a that's a very nice feature. So, in terms of how it feels in the hands, I would say the, the Bushnell is slightly smaller. They seem to have refined um, the, the shape. You know, this is uh, probably three, four generations old now, this model. And it, it, this one definitely fits in the hand a little nicer. But um, because the body almost feels a bit lighter in this one, so um, I wouldn't say this one is uncomfortable in the slightest. So, this one seems a bit more sturdy, fits in the hand. This one, this one light, and when it comes to actually picking up the numbers, uh, the Bushnell probably snaps it a fraction quicker, but um, there's not much lag time because both um, are able to try and seek out the pin. You know, usability is is very good. In so both. I've given so I've given you the positives 
on this one. You know, what about if I was trying to say why you would spend the extra money and get the Bushnell? You know, one of the things, and the big thing I disliked the most was the cases, or the difference in the cases. That's the Bushnell one, um, very sturdy. Um, yes, it looks better, but it's, it's reliable. You know you're not going to lose your device. This one, a bit flimsy, the uh, magnetic strip disappeared. You know, when I'm moving my clubs, especially out of my bag, you know, it, this, this is the biggest letdown for me. And then, with the Bushnell, you know it's going to be reliable. You know, my previous Bushnell, um, I had it from when they changed the rules so you could use lasers on the course, which has got to be in excess of 10 years. Um, I lost it. So I lost it last year. That's the reason I've stopped using the first model I had on the Bushnell. Um, you can kind of feel with the casing, the, the casing is of better quality. Um, like the camera I'm filming with now, um, it's cheaper alternative. The picture quality, everything is pretty similar. It was the casing that um, made this model more expensive than um, the cheaper one. And I would say um, that is the big one here. But I have actually dropped this one a couple times. Because I am a fantastic tester of equipment, I deliberately dropped it a couple times. And I would say as well, it did fall once because it did fall out of this one. Um, and it did withstand that. So it it has given I've been I've been impressed. You know, I um I think if this is out of your price point, you know, this is this is a great alternative. How long will it last? Um, and when we're talking years and years and years, I, I can't really comment. But for the few months that I've had it, um, I like I say, it, it's been easy to use. It, uh, it has that buzz feature. And it's um, yeah, a, a great alternative to one of these. You know, once you do get one of these, you know you have one it, literally until you lose it. That's what I found with my previous one. Um, but, like I say, a, a real good alternative. So, um, I'd like to get some comments down below. Have you, are you somebody that has um, bought a rangefinder that is not one of the top ones? So, I, I'm calling top ones kind of Bushnell and the Nikon. You know, um, companies that are kind of renowned for making lasers. Um, if you've got one that's maybe a bit cheaper, have you found one that is being your best friend, it has just worked and it's lasted for a long time? Or did you have a situation where you bought a cheaper one and then had to end up buying the more expensive one because because it didn't last that long? You know, I'd, I'd love to hear what you've got to say. And if you're using this video um, to try and make a decision, you know, I like I said, I like this one, but um, if you, I've got a link to Amazon for this one, but it, when you go on it, yeah, look at the reviews and just check um, a, does it take batteries and are people finding it's doing good stuff but I like this one I think it has some promise but yeah I'd really like you to get your comments down below uh, because uh, people can then go down and kind of see the experiences you have had so thanks for watching I uh, hope this has helped I hope to catch you soon